Hello everyone and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we've got a review for something that I'm very, very excited about. Obviously you know what it is already. You saw the title to this video. So today we're going to be looking at the Rig V3 with the Roughneck V3 Banff models. Um, but I'm also going to show you the Roughneck V2 with a two post um, uh, deck on it as well as the Rig Pig mod. I'm just going to give you a look at those. But the review is going to be on this little setup right here, which is... Let me tell you a beast. Clouds for days. It really is a monster. Anyway, before we do any more, let's go down up close. And I'm going to give you a little look around everything before we come back up top. Um, I am going to make sure there's timestamps in the description. So if you want to just know about the V3 or you just want to know about the Rig Pig or whatever, then I'll put all those timestamps down below so you can check those out. But... Uh, <laughs> I've taken so many times of recording this, my brain is still not on straight, so <laughs> still a little bit on the poorly side, so you do have to forgive any rambling and stuff that will happen. Anyway, come on then. Alrighty then, this looks like an everyday carry pocket dump, but this is exactly what we're going to be looking at today. The review is actually going to be about the mod that's in this box and this RDA, but I am going to show you all of these other bits and bobs as well. And here we do have the extension piece for a series portion for the mod. Um, we also have a tool for getting the switch out. We have the Rig Pig, which is the series mod from uh, the Vape Amp guys. And we also have the Roughneck V2 2 Post Edition, which we will have a glance at later on. And here we have an adapter, which I'll talk about later. Let's get into the mod first, shall we? This is the uh, this is something that I'm very, very excited about. I have been using this for a little while now, and uh, I'm excited to show you. So on the front there, we do have the logo, and that's pretty much it on the box. Nothing on the outside other than a sticker with the serial number going on. Um, once we open that out, we've got vapeamp.com, so we've got the website, and then we've got the hashtag for social media. Getting that out of there, and we also have the logo going on in there, obviously. Getting that out of there, we do have the mod itself, and this is a heavy, solid copper mod and everything that I expected from a rig mod. Um, I think this is absolutely superb. So we've got the logo on the front here, which we will discuss when we have the interview with James a little bit later in this video. And I think it's fascinating where this logo comes from. Uh, on the back of that, we do have the serial number down there on the bottom as well as the uh, made in USA and all that sort of good stuff as well. On the top cap there, we've got American as fuck going on there with the logo at the bottom. And underneath, we do have the Crack Liberty Bell on the, uh, on the base there as well. So um, let's break this down piece by piece, shall we? If we take this top cap off like so, you'll notice on the underside of the cap, in fact, let's zoom in a little bit more for that one. You'll notice on the underside of the cap, we do have these two copper screws. These are very kind of a little bit old school in relation to how we always used to adjust for battery rattle. Uh, you don't see it quite as much these days, but it is still certainly out there. Now, the, the top of the tube itself has this particular threading because if you want to use a rough neck, um, this will thread directly into it and go into hybrid mode. However, this top cap does allow you to be able to put whatever you fancy on the top. Now then, what you've got to do is get your atomizer, you screw it down, just in case you've not seen this before. I don't want to teach you to suck eggs if you have. But uh, if you haven't, you screw your atomizer onto the top cap, you then tighten up the uh, particularly the larger of the uh, of the two copper screws there and then the smaller of the two copper screws there can be adjusted in and out um, depending on uh, how big your battery is so this is how you adjust for your battery rattle that way you get a nice flush fitting with your atomizer and you make sure you get a good conductivity level with your battery underneath there so uh, that's just something to be aware of in case you were unaware of uh, of how these particular type of caps work now you can take this all the way out. And something that I think is quite fascinating is the uh, the shape of this screw. This is essentially what would be a 510 on a lot of other um, items. But uh, you've got a rounded connection at the top there to make sure that you get an equal level of connection underneath your atomizer. And I think that's a, a quite a quality little idea. Nice and easy to polish, nice and easy to clean. But uh, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how that top cap works anyway. So let's have a little look at the mod itself. Like I say, we've got this Cerakoted 
fitted over the top of copper a nice thick tube there so we've got a lot of uh, it feels very very weighty uh, 25 millimeter on the outside and uh, does allow us to have plenty of uh, it just it feels quality does that make sense it just feels quality now I've not had any problem with the paintwork on this mod at all um, not that I've been throwing it around but uh, I've been using it a lot and uh, even with polishing and all that sort of stuff or with a bit of cleaning to bring up the uh, the the logos make them look a little bit brighter um, I've not kind of I've not upset anything I've not damaged anything so it's all good to go uh, the threads once again it's copper so you do have to keep on top of the cleaning of those threads that's just normal for anything now then to get that switch out of there this is where this particular tool comes into play these pins are quite soft so just be careful about these and don't kind of bang it on your desk or anything hard or anything like that what happens is these two pins will actually sit inside the uh, the holes in that switch down there so we place that into the uh, into the mod we give it a little turn until it clicks into place and then we just give it a little bit of a unscrew and this will unscrew the button obviously what I'm doing here is I'm keeping my finger on the button as well so make sure that doesn't go plinging off once the, uh, the, the the spring has its naughty little way so this is the uh, the button taking apart there we've got the spring we have the copper switch piece the button piece rather um, and underneath there this I could do with another clean looking at it under there but once again that's all solid you can also at this point see your venting areas down the bottom there as well so the spring here nice and solid for making a good solid throw which we'll talk about later on and this contact here I believe you can purchase silver contacts from the vape amp website now if that sort of thing tickles your fancy I must admit I wouldn't mind trying one of these with a silver contact in it but uh, as with anything keep on top of it I try and keep this as clean as I can and the uh, the easy way to do this as uh, I believe I think I've mentioned before uh, I, that I saw from was it vaping uh, uh, Big Lou I think back of a mouse mat give it a good old push or give it a good old scrub on there and it comes up looking lovely and that's just a really simple way to keep your copper contacts nice and clean um, but haven't turned my phone off we'll worry about that later but that's it it's as simple as it gets there's nothing else to it to reinstall all you've got to do is pop your spring back on back onto your button you pop your button back into there obviously you've got the square section going on underneath this button which fits into that hole nicely which stops the uh, the button rotating once it's going inside the uh, or once it's inside the mod we'll push push that in there like so we'll make sure we've got the switch attached to this first just to make it nice and easy we'll push that back in there like so make sure we get in there nice and snug and then all you've got to do is you pop that in there you'll find the screw catches nice and easily screw it in and jobs are good one. that's it that's it that's as simple as it gets doesn't get any easier does it really anyway that's it for the mod so here we are with the Roughneck V3 RDA and uh, it's a very simple easy looking uh, RDA on the outside at the very least. Now obviously we've got this kind of integral drip tip going on here which I'll discuss when we go up close but uh, I'll show you how that pops off um, and we do have this hybrid mode down the bottom here. Now this obviously is entirely so it can fit in top of the uh, the, the rig tube mods and uh, it does a very good job as well. On the back there you'll see that it does have the serial number which also if you purchase in a kit will match up with your uh, with your mech um, and on the front there we do have the American made logo going on there as well the only issue with the paint is here is somehow I've managed to scratch it and do that I have no idea how I've done that but uh, that is the only ding that I've got on here I've not dropped it down the road not just no idea no idea but uh, anyway let's uh, let's take this apart so I can show you what's going on on the inside now then First point being, there is a copper cap, so it does need a fair amount of upkeep. You do need to ensure that you keep this clean at all times and don't let it patina. At the top cap here, this is your drip tip, which is surprisingly comfortable. And like I say, we will talk about when we go up top. Now there is an O-ring in the top there to help the drip tip stay in. And there are two O-rings at the bottom there to make sure that we don't leak all over the mod and all that sort of good stuff. Now, these O-rings do mean that they can be a little bit snaggy when they're getting on top of the uh, on top of the mod even once you've lubricated them or on top of the atomizer base should I say um, they can be just a little bit 
a little bit snaggy but if you give it a little bit of a wobble when you get it on it goes on there nice and fine and obviously once it's all screwed up to the mod it looks rather splendid as well in my opinion now then let's have a little look at the deck because that is pretty different and quite exciting if i push that out of there so this is the deck which is uh, a little bit different and quite exciting um, I think a few people were kind of unsure about how to build on here originally but I will give you a brief idea of how I build on here and let you know what I think what you've got here in the two posts obviously you've got your positive on this side underneath with it well with all the insulation around it and then you've got the negative on this side now the clamps are actually on the side of the uh, the posts themselves so what you need to do is you've got a Phillips head screw under there um, I can actually use my Coilmaster flathead screwdriver in here as well. But uh, there we go, you can pull those clamps out like so. Now I would like to have seen a much larger um, chamfer on the side of this corner there just because I think it would have helped. However, unlike um, clamps that are down on top, um, once the, once your wire is pushed this open obviously you're going to be building with it sitting in this kind of position so they, they're not likely to fall back in you know so the chamfer isn't quite as necessary but it might have been a nice little how to or addition to add to uh, to this this type of clamp system um obviously you'll do the same each side you'll build so your coil goes on top of the airflow and that does mean that you have a vast amount of space going on in here that you can actually dump your juice down onto which i think is absolutely superb but what i'm going to do now is just throw a little quick build in here so i can show you what it looks like so these are the coils that I've gone with, uh, just done uh, seven wraps of 24 gauge stainless steel, uh, hopefully coming out somewhere around the 0.2 region, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you nice and quickly, what I've done is I pre-bent the legs of these coils, I'll pop a picture up now, and you can see that by pre-bending those legs, it just means that you can open these clamps out, stick them in, bend the legs back around the clamps, and then just do them up. And it makes life nice and simple. I could make it a lot tidier than I have here, but uh, i just done this one for speed, to be honest with you. And like I say, what I've done on this one is the, uh, the, 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 the legs actually come out underneath the coil, but I flipped the coil over. So that means that on this side, the legs don't actually get in interrupted, or they don't interrupt any of the wicking. So it just make sure it makes the wick able to drop straight down into the deck there into that really really deep juice well and uh, and not have any issues whereas with this side you can see that while that one's not too much of a problem um, this one could be just a little bit maybe a touch but uh, this one is the one that I prefer so if I've got the legs going it's above the coil rather than underneath the coil and it just helps with wicking in my opinion anyway let's get some wick in here now shall we Something I should highlight at this point, why we have this adapter, this is something you do have to spend extra money on. However, this adapter means that you can pop your um, Roughneck RDAs in, into that, like so, nice and easily, and that turns it into a pinned 510 affair. So that means that you can pop it onto your own reader and make sure that you're going to be safe and sound with everything you do. Now then what I've done there is we do have the seven wraps of 24 gauge over three and a half mil ID and it surprises me how much they look as though they're getting lost in this deck which I think is brilliant. Now then you'll see that I've got a massive amount of wick going either side there and you can see how much it protrudes outside the side of the base and uh, I've got to say it just it will take it all. If I just give it a little bit of a fold under there. And there we go, that's it pretty much wicked up. A little bit of tidying to do in there, but it's taken all of that wick in there. And you can see right down the center there, you can still kind of just see the, uh, the positive pin going through. So that means that you can just dump your juice down the middle there and you haven't got to worry about it overflowing unless you really, really over drip. There's a hell of a lot of wick in there that can keep you going for a fair old time. And I think that's absolutely superb. Now then the other products I did, did just want to show you quickly are the rig pig and the roughneck v2 two post now then i think these are pretty cool we've got on the the, uh, the roughneck v3 let's have a little look at that first shall we in fact no let's look at the rig first that's because it's the biggest <laughs> um, fingerprints all over i do apologize for that but we do have a big monster series deck going on here now both the roughneck v2 and v3 fit in the top of this hybrid connection here which i think is absolutely superb and then at the bottom there we have some venting for down that point and we also have some uh, some vent holes on this battery cap right here 
Now to get this battery cap out, I do need to use a screwdriver. It's not something I can do by uh, by touch because those um, the threads in here are a little bit kind of bindy. Not not tough bindy but they are a little bit um, and if I zoom in there I can show you maybe you can see what's what I mean when I say that um, they're you know they're not bad threads but I keep trying to clean them I keep oiling them I keep doing all that sort of stuff but they'll kind of turn stick turn stick turn stick so it's no problem with a coin or with a screwdriver but uh, just by fit by my thumbnail it couldn't happen and then in there obviously we've got all of the uh, we've got all of the threading going on in there as well so it's a super simple piece of kit to be honest honest with you what you can do if you want to is undo these two screws here take them out like so and they are big monsters going on there and then that means you can just pull the rest of your rig pig apart into the three sections so we do have these uh, these copper sections on the top and the bottom there that is heavily coated on this one um, and we do have this which I believe is a Delrin insert or a Delrin uh, a piece of Delrin to uh, hold everything together um, everything holds in there quite nicely now underneath here in the uh, in the bottom in the base you do have a couple of insulators there which will fall out like so so just make sure you don't lose those as you don't get any spares for those but uh, that's about it there is a, I think there's an insulator going on on the inside of here as well but that hasn't fallen out on me and that's as simple as it gets this big old lump of copper is transferring one from positive to negative to complete or to do the series connection now underneath the top section obviously we've got the hybrid there and uh, we do have the button which you can disassemble as particularly with the tool that we used in the other one or you can use tweezers on that one if you really want to but that's it an amazingly simple piece of kit which I imagine to get machined cleanly is absolutely a an absolute pig to be honest with you <laughs> could be why it's called the rig big but uh, but there we go so this button does go in at a slight angle as you'll see that that does come out at a slight angle however the flat section there does make contact with your battery so that's all fine and dandy that all pops on together like so you do have a little ridge along there that the uh, the base sections have to go onto. Now, obviously, make sure that you've got where well, you've got the button on this side that um, you have the hole on this side, because obviously you've got to have a, ba a battery go up that way, and the other way is going to have the battery go in from the top. There we go. That's it. That's how you take apart the rig pig for cleaning. Super easy. It really, really is. Right. So here we have the Roughneck V2. Now this is the two post edition. Um, in it's very similar kind of format to the other one. You do have the positive pin, nice large flat surface there underneath amongst all of the insulation. Um, we can screw that onto the rig and we can pull off this top cap uh, very similar to the top cap of the or the barrel of the uh, the v3 you do have the o-rings at the bottom there and at the top but uh, differently you do have this top cap here which will allow you airflow control to go on there should you want to use it now obviously you can't use this for the uh, for the for the v3 because it would be kind of pointless because <laughs> it wouldn't reach the airflow but it doesn't fit either so getting that bad boy in there like so nice little comfortable snap and away it goes the deck super simple two post the one thing on this one to be aware of aside from a super deep juice well again is the fact that we do have a copper positive pin you can see that i freshly polished mine up so it is all nice and clean and dandy but uh, yeah be aware of that that once again like the inside of the top caps you don't want to let that get too patinaed or unpleasant looking it's nice and simple to undo all you've got to do is take out that screw that holds the positive pin in and then you can take that out give it a little bit of a polish up with your favorite copper polish uh, give it a good old clean under the under some warm water and then pop it all back together again and everyone's a winner but dead easy to build i'm not going to show you how to build on a two post i think most people will know how to do it on by now but uh, even then the one that we use on the v3 would work on this as well so here we are with the Roughneck V3 on top of the Rig Pig. Uh, it's just a simple dual coil uh, round wire bill going on there. Nothing super special, but it does come out at a cheeky 0.4. So uh, let's have a little toot and see what this is like. I just wanted to show you the vapor production of these in series mode, just because, well, why the fuck not? The series mode is there and it's a bit of a beast, I've got to say. So uh, let's have a little toot of this one. 
<laughs> and that was with just a super, super short drag. Let's go for a bigger one, shall we? <laughs> Clouds for days. It's an animal. It really, really is. Um, I really, really do like the fire button on this, and I'm sure I'll say that again in this review. But I really like I like the weight of it, and I really like that fire button because it's nice and springy, um, and it just feels nice in the hand for a little power pack like this. It's really very cool, and I found that I mean with this 0.4 coil in it, I can I can go for a fair while without having to worry about the batteries. I know there's two batteries, so it kind of makes sense, but nonetheless, you know, I'm used to changing out batteries in single tubes a lot more, and uh, yeah, I'm quite quite happy. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Right, let's have a little look at the stacked rig now, shall we? Let's do that. And we're back with this big bad boy. Would you look at the size of that? The only annoyance I've got with this is the fact that this aluminium tube is uh, it's a different paint finish to the, to the copper bodied uh, jobby that I've got here. But I'm sure I've mentioned that in the up close. But other than that, I mean, it's it's a piece. Do you really know? Is there different shades of black? I don't know. I don't know. But let's have a do on this big Big bad boy, shall we? Much as, <laughs> much, much as with the rig pig, um, as you'd expect, it's it's just a fucking animal. <laughs> We're going to do one more large pull because there is something that I want to highlight, which I'll probably highlight again with this atomizer. Because of the distance in between the coils, you can get your juice and you can just dump it down there in the middle, which I really, really like for a bottom feeding head or air bottom feed air there we go let's go with that normally it's an absolute pain in the ass but with this one you can just pfft, your juice right in there which makes me very very happy indeed right then <laughs> did you see that oh it's bonkers anyway <laughs> let's get back to the normal stuff shall we come on then so that was the up close and personal with the rig V3 Banff and the V3 Roughneck as well. And uh, I think they look pretty darn sweet. I really, really do. And also we did have a quick look at the Rig Pig with the Roughneck V2 2 post edition as well. Uh, just so I could show you that and uh, and how it all works. Now then, there's uh, there's I've got quite a few thoughts about this. And I've got a, I'm a little bit excited about it to be honest with you. But before we go any further, I want to go through a uh, an interview. I want to show you an interview that... Uh, I, t I did with James from Rig uh, back in Vape Jam where he gets to explain a little bit about the company. So those of you that are interested in that, then uh, hopefully you'll enjoy what he has to say. And as I said at the start, I will put timestamps down below if you want to go just, just to specific parts of this review. Anyway, let's go and hear what James has to say, shall we? Come on then. Here we are with the big head on Joe from Rig. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of a chat here um, to tell you a bit about Rig tell you about about how they're getting on in the UK a little bit about where they came from if you're reasonably new to mech mods and you've got back into this kind of new love of mechs um, to tell you a little bit more about it and obviously I'm including this in the v3 with the v3 roughneck review so hopefully we'll get a little bit more information all about that as well so thank you very much for coming in you got it man appreciate it yeah, man. appreciate you man so do you want to tell us a little bit about rig then where did it start where did it come from so where the rig started was uh is I, was, I was off on a business trip uh installing storefronts i used to be a journeyman glazer yeah and i came back and uh the deal with that was i was smoking two packs a day and i'd take the cigarette butts i put them in my back pocket because i didn't want to litter and my wife hated it yeah just hated it. Her uh, her grandfather died of lung cancer. My grandpa's died of lung cancer. My oh, grandma. Right. It's just like she was like, "That's enough." So I came home, and she had spent six hundred dollars on like a Terra mod with an Igo W, cotton and wire and yeah. just a plethora of juice. Yeah. And um, it was all eighteen milligram. I learned really quickly you don't want to <laughs> drip eighteen. But uh, yeah, so um, I used the mod for several days. Yeah. Um, I broke it a few times. It was really hard to use. There was like 18 thread counts on the Terramod. Okay. Um, the shop that I was going to 
swapped it out a few times, gave me really good customer service. I tried contacting the manufacturer, no avail. Um, they swapped me out to a Penny Mod, which was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I was using that with the IGO W. And uh, one day the Penny fell out. I mean, we're only talking, this is a short period of time, seven days, yeah, right? Yeah. So all this happened in seven days. The Penny fell out and I had stuck it in my truck in the cup holder and it picked up a, a, an old Penny. Okay. And, and it was tails, so I couldn't see the year. So I dropped that mod, I dented the button, and it wouldn't work. Yeah. So obviously the shop couldn't return at that time, right? But I had built the rapport with them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, you know what? I don't want you to. I don't want you to return this mod. I was just hoping you guys could help me fix it because yeah. I can't get a hold of that manufacturer either. Yeah. And so uh, what ended up happening is um, out of nowhere, I was like, I'm just gonna go make my own mod. And they're like kind of laughed you know yeah, yeah, and my yeah. wife was with me and she's like she looked at me crazy everybody looked at me nuts I'm like well how are you gonna do that I was like yeah, let's be back in seven days if you like it will you buy it can I put it in your store and he's like yeah sure if you make it I don't yeah, think yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. so that day I called in work and I said hey listen I'm gonna take my vacation week one week vacation and uh, my wife cried of course she was like no don't do it <laughs> and um, within about five to seven days I met my my partner Ron who could take my design and make it a reality. And cool. uh, it was just, it was nuts. I walked back into that vape shop. I, I set the mod down on the counter <laughs> and I walked around looking at all the other mods and the guy's jaws dropped. They're like, yeah. what's that? <laughs> and I was like, uh, that's the mod I make. We, we didn't have the name yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we were gonna call it like the Morning Star or something like that, okay. right? So uh, it gets deeper. and. Uh, so they're like, whoa, what the hell? And I was like, hey, throw a build on this for me. So they yeah. come and grab it, and they're blown away. This thing was stainless steel. It had a locking ring originally. We took yeah. that off. Yeah, yeah, Didn't yeah. need it with the four-pound spring. Yeah. And uh, they put a build on it, and they were just like, wow. They did a voltage drop test. I think it was like a, not that that matters. Voltage drop doesn't mean shit without, you have to have amperage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's no amps, the volts don't matter. So it's kind yeah. of a combination of a lot of things. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, um, but at the time, the hype was voltage drop, and they did yeah. like a, I know a 0.1 or a 0.2 build with like a 0.1 drop on stainless steel was pretty okay. good, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that, I can't yeah. really totally remember. I never really focused on voltage drop, I didn't care. I was looking for something, like I said, I was breaking my mods, yeah. couldn't get a hold of the manufacturer, so I wanted to make something sturdier yeah, yeah. and easier to use too. I mean, 18 thread counts is just freaking ridiculous. <laughs> and um, so when I found my, my guy to help me make the rig, he, um, he fixed my penny mod for me and when he pulled the penny out, it was a 1962 penny. And I was like, man, they just don't make shit like they used to, do yeah. they? <laughs> right? And uh, so we started getting into it. We were gonna name it the Colonial Mod. Yeah, I, um, I had an interview with uh, with uh, Buddha, and uh, turns out he liked the name, so he took the name and ran it with the, the Colonial Mod, yeah. if you remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember it was a tube with uh, no lock ring and flush button, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyhow. That drama happened. Um, so we ended up going with uh, my wife pulled out her grandfather's belt buckle collection. So we. Oh, that's um, really cool. That's this is where the that. rig comes from. This is my wife's grandfather's belt buckle. That's Wear really it every cool. day, man. Um, <laughs> my wife is my best friend. She's uh, she's just awesome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, basically, we branded it after her grandfather because he was all American. Yeah. Um, I mean, we make everything to our packaging in America. You know? Yeah, that's the uh, that is very cool. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a tough one to do, but yeah, but we do it. So that's so the background of rig. In the uh, in the time you've been going, obviously you had the V1, and it very quickly picked up pace. It quick picked yeah. up a lot of pace with the with the cloud chasers. Yeah, um, and the people that wanted a hard hitting mod. Right. Um, so I mean, how did was that a surprise, or would be kind of aware that that was going to be something that people were going to go for? I didn't think it would go as big as it has. No. You know, I, I wasn't. I wasn't really like literally. My first order, I was. I ordered 500 mods. Yeah. I was like, okay, 500 mods. That's, that's pretty good at the time. You know, it's 2014. Yeah. You know, mechs were. You know, good mechs were working out. Yeah. And um, plus, it's expensive. You know, when you when you're trying to order lower numbers, especially if it's getting made in America, it's kind of yeah. The, the manual time and this, the the expense of doing that is all yeah. a bit of a killer. Well, that and I was green, you know. I didn't yeah. know machining really, so um, you know the price I was paying was was high. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, and every machine shop at the time was getting hammered by mech mod guys, yeah. you know. So they already knew what I was making, so they kind of knew what they could get out of me, you know. Yeah, so yeah. they were kind of taking advantage of it, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, so we went we went uh, stainless brass copper 
uh, with stainless steel buttons, stainless uh, brass button, and a copper button. Yeah. Um, to fit 22 millimeter um, RDAs. You know, yeah. all the rigs actually self adjust too, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you put the RDA down, well, the V2 does because it's hybrid, but the V3 and the V1, the pin inside will actually self adjust. Gotcha. So okay. uh, I can I can show you if you have one on you. Anyway, yeah, no, yeah. So, um, I think I showed that in my um, V3 review before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to like take the pin out, you just put it in, yeah. screw it down, and once it gets tight, just keep screwing it down. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. won't damage anything. No, no, absolutely. And uh, I guess my goal was to make working class mod that yeah. that you could, you know, take the construction site, because that was a journeyman glazer, you know? You could drop yeah. it off a one-story building and it pretty much worked. Yeah. Well, it turns out we made the, the button just a little too thin, so we got a lot of, that's you know, it. we had to fix it. Yeah, so the know. V2 came out and it was thick around that bottom end, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we thickened it up on the V2. Um, you know, usually, so we'll drop the mod, we'll do basic colors, and then, uh, you know, we came up with a roughneck. I don't even know how we really came up with that. Um, we were sitting there and uh, I was like, I was using my mod, I wanted it to be hybrid, but you know, and hybrids weren't really out yet. There was yeah, a yeah. few talks amongst, like, you know, I kind of went to the top pretty quick yeah. with other mod makers, and there was a lot of talking going on. And I'm from Orange County, where, you know, AV's 20 miles from me, um, just all the mod companies, yeah, tugboat, yeah, yeah. you name it. <laughs> so um, I was messing around in the prototype shop, and I went to take a, I had a 22 millimeter tugboat on me, and I was like, damn, what are we going to do? And I was like, went to screw it on without, it was just the, the RDA. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it like jammed in there. And I was like, no way. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, hey, let's throw threads on the outside of this and just give it a, a run. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, wait, wait, let's do this. So we kind of came up with the back cap being the deck with a safe, I mean, it's a safe yeah. hybrid connection. Yeah. There's really no way to hard short, you know? No, no, absolutely. And, it's, and I'll just be showing you that if I haven't done already in the review of the V3 that, uh, that we're talking about today. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then we moved on to V3. There was just a few things I didn't like about V2. Um, when we launched V2, 22 millimeters were it. Yeah. And then, uh, unless you had a rough neck or I think a battle cap or whatever it is. Yeah, from yeah, yeah. A couple continuous. of them sort of big old chunky monkeys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, pretty much, uh, I think Kennedy dropped a 24 millimeter bottom airflow and that wouldn't fit on the V2. Yeah. But everybody, pretty much when they buy a rig, they want the rough neck to go with it. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that was one thing I didn't like about it. You couldn't put in any other bigger RDAs that weren't just yeah. ours, you know, because people like to pair off with other of course, companies. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So when we went V3, we figured, because V1 was like 110 millimeters. I yeah. mean, it was a billy club. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we tried to shorten it down. We took a little off the back end, a little yeah. off the top end, shortened all the contacts, just made it a newer, cleaner version. Yeah, yeah And absolutely. then squared off the button housing so you get a better contact. At first, we weren't sure where current was really going through but then we did some lab tests yeah yeah, yeah. figured it out you know it's was it going through the spring well if it does that why on magnet mods is it working so it must yeah. be you know hitting against the wall and going so we yeah, squared yeah, yeah. it off so a you can use the spanner tool to get your button out easier yeah, yeah and then b when you hit the button it will twist a little bit yeah yeah you're just naturally yeah. going to do that that's fine and so it uh makes good contact yeah. against the walls okay now you talk about the roughneck as well and obviously we've got a v3 of the roughneck now to go along with the v3 of the of the rig mod um tell me a little bit about it because in this video we're going to be talking about the the posts and building on it and all that sort of stuff yeah tell me a little bit about the idea behind that one because those side kind of clamps yeah so i guess the idea behind it was just to kind of uh there we go. Give something new. I guess it had been done before, uh, side clamps. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen it. Um, and we really wanted to do a roughneck that was bottom airflow. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, okay, in America we can't build, right? Yeah. Nobody's allowed to build. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, can't yeah. build for anybody. So, we figured with clamps, it's definitely going to be easier. Yeah. You know, you can feed your wires under the screws, bend them around the screw, yeah. and then do the same thing going the other direction under the screw. If you want to put a big ass build in there, yeah. then you're gonna, you know, need to utilize the top and the bottom. That will focus it eventually. If it doesn't, then yeah, I've always got there, there, there we go. Yeah, so that was just kind of our, our thought process on that. Yeah, we didn't, yeah, yeah. didn't want to just go with another, you know, you can put a, a comp build in here or, or a series build. Yeah. And that was kind of what we were aiming for. Absolutely, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I think after using that on the uh, on the one the, the black V3 with the V3 roughneck, the airflow is really smooth as well. You got a nice chunky build deck. Oh, sorry, depth of the deck there, so you can get plenty of cotton in, so you're not dripping every two puffs. Right. And and it's just it's a really smooth smooth vape. Right. Which I think is really really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I, think, yeah. I mean, obviously you've got the uh, you've got the rig pig as well, which is this bad boy here. Um, have you got any other any other ideas to update anything like this? Is there anything along those lines with new products you want to tell the people? Yeah, we're gonna see how it goes on the um, if the if the series box mechs stay around. I mean, the tubes have taken off, right? Yeah. This is essentially a stacked rig in a compact form. Yeah. You know, and you can have. There's also in this review. There's also going to be the uh, the stacked extension as well. So right. Similar kind of vape, but just different form. Yeah. Personally, this is one of the favorite mods. That I've ever made, and yeah. the V3 Roughneck will fit on here if you like bottom airflow. Yeah, um, we made the two posts for that. So, yeah, there's going to be a version two of it, a little bit more affordable. You know, that was one one of the big issues is it only takes our our Addy. Um, you can use a V3 back cap and run whatever you want on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just really uh, it being hybrid and series, we really wanted to use the Roughneck. Yeah, and not. Yeah. Um, and that, that was just kind of a decision we made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay, know. that's cool. Plus, now, it pairs off well, so. Yeah, absolutely. Now, obviously, you've got the aluminium now. You've got the, do you still do stainless? I can't remember, but you no, do, you we do the copper. Have you got a, a strongest, what do your customers go for? Do they go for the copper because of the, kind of the, the knowledge, kind of hard heat and nature of it? Yeah, I mean, um, between the aluminum and, co and copper, I didn't notice, I mean, there's a little bit of a difference, but um, some people claim it hits harder on the aluminum. I was just trying to give something that was a little more affordable. Yeah. I was against aluminum for two years. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah. I won't do it. It's not high quality. I don't want to do it. Yeah. But uh, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, we get cloned heavily. We wanted to try to offer something in that hundred dollar mark. Yeah. You know, just a little bit more affordable. Maybe you want to, you know. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of where we were going yeah. with it. You know, yeah. give them something a little bit more affordable because this yeah. setup's like three hundred eight bucks. Yeah. There's a lot of machining here, and it's all made here. Yeah. The paint job cost me twelve dollars. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the engraving <laughs> is you know three dollars. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it adds up real yeah, quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, contacts and packaging made in Orange County or Pacoima, California. Yeah, yeah. Packaging. I, mean, I make that here. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's yeah. Uh, really, truly vaping American-made products. <laughs> I think the only thing we don't get here is uh, bottles for our juice because nobody can. That and uh, some of our shirts, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was very anal on that, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, well, yeah. no, it's really cool. I mean, the, uh, I was really pleased with the, the, the V3, the copper with the black Cerakote because, I mean, I like the uh, the V3 and the aluminium, but um, that V3 in the copper, we had the weight to it. It, right. had, it had that kind of, oh, yeah. turn around, you know? Yeah, and that's what we're known for. So Absolutely. I, I did launch the aluminum first. We sold quite a bit of those. Yeah. And then most people that bought the aluminum, they'll use that for their daily, and then they're picking up the higher end. Yeah, stuff for their, you know, yeah, absolutely. just their collections, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got like rows of mods all over the place, so, <laughs> you know, yeah. So was, I guess the, the last thing is, you've been to the UK now, is this your third show? Second, yeah. Um, how do you think it differs from the American shows when you attend those and the, the mech market in the UK as opposed to the States? Uh, you know, it's kind of dying off in the States a little bit, you know. Really? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, the government's really tightening down on us, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the TPD versus the FDA rules are uh, manageable, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, manageable. Yeah. Something needed to happen, yeah. you know. So it's uh, it's good that they did something, you know. Uh, some of the stuff you guys got is a little ridiculous, like, you know, you can't have a, a five mil tank, you have yeah, to have yeah. two mil, but you can have the extension. You know, you can't have a, a 60 mil, but you can buy, you know, yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah, so but no America sense. is like every different state has a different tax, and I mean you can't build, which is that's just set up for failure. Yeah, it's just you know man. you got some kid that wants to go run coat hanger in his mod. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, I have some hillbilly friends in Utah that love doing that shit. <laughs> you know, that's on them. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I mean, there's no point. I mean, point yeah. oh one eight is just. Come on, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're pretty much absolutely. asking for it. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's... No, no. So, um, do you find that the UK is picking up business-wise oh, yeah. from, from a mech point of view, though? 100%. Yeah, 100%. I love it over here. Yeah. It yeah. seems like mechs are definitely getting more of a comeback over here, so it's great to see like things like the rig coming in and having such a strong presence. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like, when I first came here, I was pretty shocked. Yeah, yeah. I was, I had no idea like that anybody really cared over here too much. Yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, thank you, UK. You know, I was like, wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. You know. Definitely. And uh, yeah, I was blown away, to Wicked. be honest with you. Fantastic. Yeah, it was. Uh, the shows here are great. Right. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank um, you. What we'll do is we'll go back to the review of the uh, of the Rig V3 and Roughneck V3 now, and hopefully we've got a little bit more background so you understand a little bit more about the mod. But thanks very much. Hey, much appreciated. On the field, follow the Rig mod. Yeah, yeah. yeah Don't absolutely. forget to follow at the Rig mod and our new brand at American Made. O H M E R I C A N made. I'll make sure all the links are down below in the description as well. Right on. Thanks, Thanks very bro. much. Cheers guys, back to normal service. So I hope you found that as interesting as I did. I think the, the the whole ethos behind Rig, I think it's really cool. I love the fact that it's a, the the design and, it and the name and what have you comes from uh, James's wife's grandfather. Um, I think I think that just it just kind of has that nice warm fuzzy feeling going on do you know what i mean um now obviously as a fully american made product it's uh, it's not going to be the cheapest and we will come to the price in a bit but uh it is it this is what i wanted when i wanted a rig mod this is exactly it it really really is now i wasn't going to include it in the in the voltage tests and like james says in the video you know it, it's they're, they're dependent on so many things that that it's it's hard to kind of get an actual solid idea however um, obviously, I've been doing a lot of tests with just the review models that I have, which don't produce standalone figures, and they only produce figures that you can use in relation to the ones that I've tested. Um, however, because of the um, because of the way the rig works, in as much as having um, uh, the the hybrid top cap or the hybrid fitting on the top um, and the floating 510 or the 510 going on as a, as a separate piece I didn't think it would be fair to include it because there's that extra lump of copper in the way there is that extra bit of copper when it comes to having the uh, the top cap on the mod however I did the test anyway and let me just show you the results on this Pull those in from there. There we go. Um, now then, this surprised the shit out of me. It really, really did. Now you can see that it comes out at 3.77, 3.75, 3.75, which gives us an average of 3.76, which does beat absolutely everything on there with the exception of the Tomahawk. But then again, everything else, and we'll just move those away, um, everything else on that chart is hybrid. Um, this was tested with the 510 top cap on. So I think that those figures are pretty darn impressive, to be honest with you. I think that's quite cool. Now then, pardon me, it's not always about just the figures. It's about the mod itself, and it is very, very well made. It's solid, um, it's heavy, it's weighty. Uh, the great thing with the Cerakote means that um, you don't have to worry about cleaning it every five minutes and all that sort of stuff. You can clean up the uh, the logos and stuff every now and again if you're a little bit careful with it. I've done that, and uh, and I think it looks better for it. Um, but uh, no, all in all, I think the mod is an absolute corker. Now, the RDA is something that I think is very, very interesting. I think that those wide posts with the side clamps do take a little bit of getting used to if you are going to use them with um, sort of a small round wire build like I've done in this video then you do have to pre-bend the legs out and then forwards and like I did in the up close what I did is I had them coming out at the same on the same plane so I had two two, uh, two legs or one coil going at the bottom and the other coil coming in at the top what I've done with the coil that's in here at the moment is something else that I've previously tried where I have kind of one leg at the top one leg at the bottom I've still bent them out to the sides and then forward but it means that you've still got that kind of that diagonal thing going on you know and that's worked absolutely fine as well so when it comes to building it I've had no issues with the build whatsoever it just takes a little bit of getting used to that's all but the great thing is um, you can put pretty much whatever size coil you like in there at the moment I've got three and a half mil coils in here but I've used four mil coils and two and a half mil coils all sorts and that's super easy and also if you're going to use this in series mode um, and make put it on top of either the stacked version of this or on the rig pig then it's an absolute beast it really really is and those extra wide posts mean that you can get a nice wide coil going on and you can have those legs going straight into the post so i think that it's actually quite good is it necessary 
Meh, maybe not. Maybe not, to be honest. But um, it is quite cool. It's, I don't think it's something that's going to be super catch on. Not gimmicky, but it, it's different, you know. Does it provide anything better for a building experience? I'm not so sure. But is it absolutely fine? Absolutely it is. Yeah, it works like a good one. It really, really does. Now then, let's just have a little bit of a vape, shall we? Absolute corker. It performs like you would expect a rig to perform, and I'm so happy to say that. I did enjoy the aluminium rig that I had last year that I reviewed, um, but it wasn't the, because it was aluminium, it didn't have the weight to it. It, did, it wasn't what I expected as a rig. This is a rig. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is just tip top. I'm really, really happy with it. I really, really am. Um, the RDA, to be honest with you, between the two RDAs, it's a tough one because um, normally I don't like undercoil airflow, but because um, because of the width of this, it means that you can just dollop your juice down the middle through the drip tip, and it, unless you horrifically over drip, then it's not going to come through the air holes, which I think is fantastic. Um, a little bit on the noisy side, maybe. But uh, but it's certainly not offensive and it doesn't whistle or anything like that. Um, if you do tighten that airflow down, I mean, I've got there, I've got, I don't know, a third maybe? Is that a third showing? Something like that. Just less than a half, anyway. And that's a nice, warm, flavorful vape. Flavor isn't amazing, but it is entirely reasonable. Um, I find that the flavor is maybe a little bit better on the V2, and I think that's possibly attributed to the fact that it's a little bit lower, it's a little bit stumpier, um, and uh, maybe it's just a little bit closer to your mouth hole. That's why, you know? Um, and also the V2 does have side airflow, which means that it's nice and nice and easy to control, and definitely no over dripping or anything like that. Um, now then, I don't think there's really a great deal more I can say about this other than I think that the rig stuff is fantastic, not just because of the way it performs and looks, but also because um, if you have any issues, if you have any kind of manufacturer problems like your paint's too thin or there's a, there's an issue with threading or whatever else, if you email customer services at rig, they will sort you right out. That's just, that's just something they're going to do. If you fuck the rig up yourself, if you've, if you've tried cleaning it with sandpaper, they're not going to help you. But... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's something you would expect but no i think that's really really good so you do have that kind of warranty aspect to it as well now then looking at prior the price like i said at the start it's not a cheap bit of kit this whole setup here is actually 288 dollars on the uh, vape amp website and that's a fair bit of scratch for it for, for a mod and an rda but nonetheless it's serialized um it it does it is harder to go through i mean i'm not going to try and justify the price to you. At the end of the day, it's American made, which is going to be more costly than a lot of other things. Um, it's um, it's serialized, so um, if you, you make the mod and then you make the top cap and then you realize you fucked the top cap up, you have to throw that away and do it again just to make sure that you get the serial that same serial number on both. Um, I think, I, I don't know, I mean, you know, $288, you can't get away from it, is a fair chunk of change. But having said that, if you like your mechs, um, there are some that are far more expensive. I mean, we've we've looked at mechs in the past that are sort of over two hundred dollars just as a mech, you know, and that's without the RDA. So, you know, it's horses for courses. If you can afford it, if it's the sort of thing that you enjoy, and if it's something that you think is important in your collection, then fucking right, go for it. Absolutely, I think this performs fantastically. One thing that I haven't mentioned is the drip tip. I thought that having this kind of drip tip thing go Going on the top there that big old bit of delrin poking through your mouth i thought was going to be really really uncomfortable but rather than clamping your lips over the top of it you kind of just push your face towards it and and away you go so I don't want to waffle any more and just bore the pants off you. I do like it. I'm very excited about it. And it is certainly going up there on my shelf of, uh, of favorite mechs that I've got. And uh, I'll certainly be continuing to use this one for a very, very long time. When it comes to the Rig Pig, I think it's an absolute beast. It's a series mod, just angry series mod. It feels great in the hand. The switch is brilliant. And uh, I do enjoy using it. The only thing I've got to say about this is the threads on the, uh, the, the cap for the battery 
are just a little bit a little bit sticky which is uh, is not brilliant but uh, it does mean that you, you can undo it all fine and dandy with either a screwdriver or a or a, uh, a coin if you can get it in the slot there so that's all fine the rig v2 no no, no. The Roughneck V2, I think, is actually really good. I, I would like to be using this on a whole bunch of mods, to be fair. I really, really would. Now, I can obviously use the adapter that, that you can buy with Vapamp. And if you are going to buy this kit, I would strongly suggest you do. Because if you buy one of these little adapters, that means you can then screw both your V2 and V3 Roughneck into it. Um, and use not only use it on any other mod, but it also does mean that you can make sure you've got your um, resistance where you expect it to be. And just because you do the same build day in, day out, doesn't necessarily mean that you put a coil in here. And if it's a Clapton, you snip it and there's a little bit of the Clapton wire has gone into the deck or, you know, there's a whole bunch of reasons. So it's always a very, very good idea to make sure that you do check your resistance. That's, that's just par for the course. But uh, otherwise, having said that... <sighs> All in all, thank you very much to Rig for giving me these. I mean, for, for, for review. I think they're, they're, they're brilliant. I like them. I'm going to stop gushing. I've gushed a lot, haven't I? I'm going to try and cut out some of the gushing. I am. <laughs> but uh, no, all in all, I think it's a I think it's a cracker. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Dean the Vaping Biker. This has been the Rig Banff V3, which looks the tits. And uh, on top of that, we did look at the Rig Pig and the uh, Roughneck V2 2 post as well. Whew, it's taken me a long time to record this one. I hope it's been enjoyable. I hope I can edit it together to make it watchable. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, I will put the last review uh, there and I will put the bomb before that up there and I'll put my subscription button down there. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you very, very soon. Have it larger.